Hi, in today's video we're going to talk about something that I get four or five emails a week, phone calls about, and I thought I would cover it in a video. What we're looking at here is a Ring video doorbell. It's one of these Wi-Fi video motion sensing doorbell internet of things devices. And no, this is not going to be a review on Ring video doorbells. I have a Ring video doorbell on my house and I think it's a quite a fine product and I actually enjoy having it. But the thing I get asked about all the time is, if I have a Newtone intercom system or I have a Newtone electronic door chime, how do I hook up the ring to the wires that come out of the wall for either my door speaker or my doorbell button or whatever it is I have out there? I've explained it a million times to people and I thought now is a good time to make a video. So, hey, it's kind of hot out here. Let's go back in the shop where it's nice and cool and talk about ring and intercoms and doorbells and things like that. So off we go back to the shop. To try to understand the challenges of installing a ring video doorbell when you have a new tone intercom system with a built-in chime module or a new tone electronic musical chime, you have to understand a little bit about a basic doorbell circuit so you can compare this to what you have in your house. So what we have here is a representation of the most fundamental doorbell system that would be in probably 85 or 90 percent of everyone's homes that were built since the 1960s. So here we have a 16 volt transformer that powers the door chime. We have a standard two note mechanical door chime here. This is your garden variety $10 hardware store special doorbell. And here we have a push button on the front porch and then we have the wiring that connects it all together. This is wired in a way that would apply to probably 95% of all the houses of anyone watching this video. Or what you should understand is the transformer supplies the power, the 16 volts to power the doorbell circuit. The push button activates the door chime and the door chime is responsible for making your classic ding dong sounds as it rings. And what you need to consider is how this works and it's actually fairly simple. It's all about the flow of electricity. So the electricity starts here on the right hand terminal of the transformer and it travels up the wire and we're going to put the blue arrows to show the direction that the electricity travels in. So it travels down the green wire. It goes through a splice joint that's usually behind the chime it continues down the green wire all the way down to one side of the push button. The push button is a mechanical switch so when it's not being pushed the switch is open and the electricity stops right here on this side of the button. When someone walks up and pushes the button down it closes the switch and the electricity flows through, we'll put little arrows here, and then it flows up the orange wire like this to the chime mechanism which is an electromagnetic solenoid that's built into the center of the chime. It energizes the solenoid and the magnetic force that the solenoid creates pulls the plunger down, it strikes the bottom tone bar and it goes ding, and when the visitor releases the button, the plunger shoots back up because of the spring that's on the top of it and it goes dong. So while the button is being pushed, the electricity travels through the wire, through the solenoid, and then back down the other orange wire, all the way back down to the transformer because electricity is all about flow. So the flow, just to review briefly, the flow begins on the right hand side of the transformer. It travels up the green wire, through the splice joint, down to one side of the button. If the button is being pushed, the electricity crosses through the switch of the push button, back up the orange wire, it energizes the coil, it goes ding, and then it continues back to here. Of course, since the electricity moves through the wire at the speed of light, it moves faster than someone pushing the button, so it actually completes the circuit immediately when the button is pushed. The reason it's important to understand this is if you want to add a ring video doorbell to a system like this, you can do that because 
basically all you have is electricity flowing through wires, which is, as I understand it, what the Ring video door people want you to have when you connect your video doorbell to the wires that used to be connected to the back of the button. So this is a very simple switching circuit. It works very much like when you walk into your living room and you flip the light switch on on the wall to turn the table lamp on. The light switch is a mechanical switch just like the push button and when you flip the switch in, on your living room wall you're making a connection and the electricity flows through the switch and the lamp next to the sofa turns on. It's exactly the same thing. This would be very easy to reconfigure slightly in how the wires are being used and power your ring video doorbell from the low voltage transformer. All said and done very simple, not a big challenge. Now let's take a look at how your intercom system with a chime module or a new tone electronic musical chime varies from this. So here we have a wide array of circuit boards. And to just go through them briefly, this is a new tone chime module. This is an IA28, and this would be used in any new tone intercom system that was manufactured between 1984 through about 2010. Here we have the board out of a new tone LB55, which is an electronic musical chime. This would have been manufactured manufactured sometime between 1975 and about 1999. Here we have an LBC55, which is a variation on the LB55. It has a built-in clock. This was same time frame as the LB55. Here we have an LA60. This would be a mid-80s through mid-2000s chime. This is the board out of an LA52, which is an electronic musical chime that Newtone made starting in the 70s and was popular and available all the way through the early 2000s. And this is a circuit board out of a Newtone LA174, which is a recess-mounted Westminster chime that they still make today. While all of these boards are different, they all share one common design aspect and that is they all have microprocessors on the boards. This is the microprocessor on an IA28. Under the flap here is a microprocessor on the LB55. On the LBC55 the microprocessor would have gone right here in this socket but obviously we've robbed that for some purpose. This is the microprocessor on the LA60. This is where the microprocessor on the LA-52 would have been, and this is the microprocessor on the LA-174. The reason that all of these chimes have microprocessors, it actually began with the LB-55, which was the first musical electronic door chime new tone ever made. And back in those days, they needed a device that would have the ability of operating the chime, but also would store the songs and notes that you needed to play the songs that were programmed into the chime. And back in the mid 70s, a microprocessor was the way to do that. An LB55 like this would have had between 18 and 24 pre-programmed songs and they're reasonably long. You needed a place to store the information that would allow the chime to play the song as it was designed. And a microprocessor was the component of choice. Also the microprocessor has the ability of controlling the operation of the chime so you have a lot of benefits by using one component that can do a lot of different things. I've cleared away all the other circuit boards and what we're left with here is the Newtone IA28. Everything that I have to say about this applies to not only the IA28, it also applies to the IA29, which is the musical chime module, as well as all of the other circuit boards for all of the other models of new tone electronic chimes. Just easiest to talk about the chime module because that's what most people actually are dealing with. So again, like the other boards, here we have a microprocessor in the middle of the board. Everything else on here are supporting components that allow it to work electronically, but the microprocessor is the heart of the chime module, just like it's the heart of all of the Newtone electronic musical chimes. So why did Newtone decide to use a microprocessor as the heart of all of their electronic musical chimes and chime modules? Well, it's because microprocessors allow you to install in them a program. 
and the program makes the device, the chime module, or the electronic musical chime, operate the way you choose it to. In the case of a chime module and Newton electronic musical chimes, they all have, as a minimum, the ability to ring differently on a front door and a rear door push button, and many of them ha are three door capable, which means they have front, rear, and side door buttons. And when you have multiple buttons, they each ring differently so the resident of the house knows where the person is. It would be more complex to design a device that would have three different rings for three different doors. If you didn't use something like a microprocessor, it would be much more elaborate, much more complicated, and therefore probably much more expensive. When you have a microprocessor, you simply write the program that's loaded into it to tell it when the front door is activated ring one way, when the side door is activated, ring a different way, and when the rear door is activated, ring yet a third way. And that way it's easy, and as you change your devices or update your devices, you can change the program, and that's a relatively easy thing to do. The program is basically like a little tiny bit of software, not that much different than the app you download into your phone, although infinitely more simple. And so it's an easy thing to make a change to without having to change the entire hardware board itself. Part of the program that's loaded into the microprocessor, let's call it the management program. The microprocessor's program is going to manage the operation of the time module. And one of the things that it has to do is it has to look all of the time to see if a button is being pushed or not. It can't really look for a button push every 10 seconds or every minute or every five minutes because if someone shows up and pushes the button while it's not looking it's not going to ring so the program in the microprocessor looks for a button push all the time continuously over and over and over again forever as long as there's power to the device. So when a chime module is installed in a Newtone intercom master station and the master station is powered up, the chime module turns on and the program in the microprocessor starts looking for a button push and when it sees one, it's gonna ring the chime, the appropriate ring for whichever door the button was pushed at. So that brings up the next question, which is, how does the microprocessor know which button is being pushed? Because it's mounted way somewhere inside someone's home, and it obviously can't see. It's not a brain, per se. It's not smart. It only knows as much as the program allows it to know. So the way that these kind of devices are designed, the microprocessor sends out a little bit of electricity down the wires to each of the individual buttons. And it has, as part of its program, the ability to monitor the voltage of the electricity that it sends down to each button. And it sees and measures that, what that amount is. And as long as that amount stays relatively constant, it knows that no one has pushed a button. One of the byproducts of the little bit of electricity that it sends down the wire to the button is it allows the button to have a little tiny light bulb built into it. So at night when someone walks up to the door, you see the glow of the bulb and it's easy to find the button and push it. When someone comes to the door and pushes the button, and since the button is basically a mechanical switch, just like we talked about on the whiteboard drawing for, for a standard two-note doorbell, when you push the button, it changes the voltage that is being sent through those wires, let's say to the front door button, and the microprocessor's program sees the change because in the voltage because the button has been pushed, and it recognizes that, hey, someone's pushed the front door button, now I have to ring the chime. So immediately following the button push, which then created a voltage change on the wires to that button. The microprocessor saw that change. It looks up in its program what it's supposed to do. And if it's the front door button on an IA28, it knows that it's supposed to ring the eight note Westminster chime. And that's what it does. So it rings the chime. You hear it through the intercom system. And when it reaches the end of the, of the chime tones, it stops. It resets and it starts the program over again looking for another button push because if it's the pizza delivery guy 
maybe you didn't get to the door fast enough and he's got a lot of deliveries to make so he's going to push it again. If he does push it a second time, the microprocessor is going to see the change in the voltage on the wires again. It's going to look up the information. It's going to ring the 8 note Westminster chime and then reset and wait again. If someone comes to the back door and pushes the rear door button, the voltage is going to change on that line and that brings up the question of how does it know which button is being pushed because if it's electricity out on each set of wires to each button and it's looking for a change in the electricity how does it know well that's actually pretty simple the amount of change in the voltage on the front door will be different than on the rear door and on the side door. The amount of change will be different because that's what all of the supporting components are for. Some of the components are different for each circuit and so when someone pushes the button the way the electricity or the amount of the electricity changes is different and the microprocessor because of its program knows to look for certain changes. So let's say the front door button changes by 10 so it knows that it's the front door button, but the rear door, maybe it changes by five and the side door button changes by two. So if it sees a change of five, it knows it's not the front and it knows it's not the side. It only can be this one because that's the amount it's looking for. This is the advantage of having a device like a microprocessor that has a program with instructions in it because you can tell it precisely what it is to look for and precisely what to do when it happens. So now you have sort of a basic understanding of how a chime module or how a new tone electronic musical chime is activated. So what this is referred to as, it's referred to as a triggering circuit because when you push the button, you're triggering the chime module to look up something in its program to ring the appropriate tones and then reset again. So you're triggering it as opposed to it being like a light switch on the wall in your living room when you turn a table lamp on. Let's talk about how this defeats the idea of putting a ring video doorbell on the wires on your front porch in place of the push button that's always been there. So the one thing, and I get a lot of calls from people about, I had a call from a fellow this morning. He said, I bought a ring video doorbell. I have a new tone intercom system. He has a chime module. How do I hook it up to the wires? And I told him the short answer is you can't. It won't work and he's like everyone else who calls me about that but 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 and there is no but 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 it's not the same kind of circuit so he said and then he told me well I took the button off and I measured at the little wires that used to be on the back of the button and I measure electricity there and I told him well you certainly would have because if we recall how this operates the microprocessor is sending a little bit of electricity out through the wires which it measures and monitors so when that electricity changes it activates and rings the chime. It's not a power circuit it's not two wires connected to a transformer. It's not like your standard two note doorbell that circuit that we drew on the whiteboard where the electricity is just flowing from a power transformer through the switch to the chime and back to the transformer again and there is constant and available voltage there. The type of circuit that you have when you have a chime module or a new tone electronic musical chime is a triggering circuit. The voltage through the wires to the button are just a convenient byproduct of the design and it's not enough voltage and it's not enough power to power a ring video doorbell. It simply will not work. I know that's a really disappointing bit of information for you to hear if you're watching this, but that's sort of the facts of the situation. To answer another question that comes up during these conversations and emails that I get about this topic, no, there isn't any type of simple component or device that you can add to what you have to make it work. You can't add a resistor, you can't add a diode, you can't make some simple $2 change to the way all of this is designed and installed to accommodate the Ring Video doorbell. It simply doesn't exist. So that's sort of the ins and outs of 
why you really can't connect a Ring Video doorbell to the wires that used to be on the back of the push button on your front porch if you have a Newtone intercom system with a chime module or a Newtone electronic musical chime. You simply cannot have both devices wired together. If you really want to have a Ring Video doorbell, I would recommend that you buy the standard one with the built-in rechargeable battery. As I understand it, the battery will last about a year with normal use and when it's time to recharge it, it actually notifies you and all you have to do is plug a little USB cable into it and plug it into a USB charger and it takes a few hours to charge it up and you're good for a year. That's actually a lot less hassle than it is to try to modify your whole intercom system or your Newtone door chime system to accommodate the Ring Video Pro. The Pro is the model that doesn't have a battery built into it. The standard one does. I hope you found this video to be interesting and helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Thumbs up. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, You'll get notifications when we post new videos. So that's all for today. See you on the next video.